tubes are getting closer and closer together. But the technology when it comes into the car has to be automotive grade, right? I mean, it's a different kind of expectation for technology when you're in a car that lasts 10 years in all kinds of environments with fluids and vibration and temperature extremes than your phone, which you're going to replace every two years and you don't expect it to live if you drop it from three feet and leave it on the dash of your car and expect it to keep working, right? So it's just it's a different kind of expectation. So last year we took a lot of active safety technologies that are on the road today and some that we think will be on the road in the next couple of years, radar, vision, LIDAR, for example, and we put them together in this Audi SQ5. And we had several of them so that we could uh, use them for multiple purposes or be in different places at different times. But we did drives in the, in the traffic of Las Vegas, the consumer electronics show traffic, which is crazy. And we did automated drives and uh, had a chance to take a lot of people and get an experience, get a lot of feedback in terms of what, uh, how our system was working and how it was perceived. But shortly after that, we decided, hey, this is great for urban traffic. We went with a coast-to-coast -coast drive. So we drove from San Francisco to New York at the end of March or early early April. So. Now, is this the official Roadrunner or is this a yes. different one? This is the Roadrunner. Uh, one of them. White. No. I think the one behind us. The is. one behind us, oh, but they're okay. identical. Right. They're okay. identical in capability. So we went coast to coast, 3,400 miles, took a lot of data, understand how the individual sensors worked, how they worked collectively, some of the algorithms, and we've made a lot of improvements on that. But this year we decided to come back to Vegas, do automated driving demos through the urban traffic, which is very complicated here in Las Vegas, as, as you have been talking about, but also now equip the car to talk to a variety of different information sources. So vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to stoplights, vehicle to pedestrians, for example, and take we, we call that vehicle to everything, actually. So you're able to take information from a lot of different sources on top of all the sensors that you have on the car and help complete the scenario better for decision making for safety purposes and now improve the consumer experience in the cockpit, both for the passengers but, but even just for the driver, if the driver was alone. Being able to improve their information flow, being able to improve the driving experience, being able to improve um, how they leverage the, the automotive drive in general. So being able to get point A to point B safely is mission one, of course, but also being able to get to Starbucks easily, for example, or pick up a ride-sharing partner in this world of shared mobility that uh, we seem to be heading for as a society. Understanding when you get to a stoplight that you know exactly what the stoplight situation is, even before you can see it, because you're communicating with the stoplight. And then understanding when you come to an intersection, are there cars that are coming cross traffic that you can't see with any of your sensors, but are coming at a speed that might be too fast to stop, where you don't want to pull out in front of them. You might you want to make sure your car waits for the for the traffic to clear, for example. So that's what uh, we're demoing in the, in the car today, and you'll get a chance to see all that and have it presented in a way that uh, we can highlight the individual experiences for you, and you can tell us what you like. Okay, let's let's go. So who's this gentleman here? So yeah, this is Tony. He is our safety driver. I, He's going to be focusing on the system. So okay. making sure you can go into manual or autonomous mode, checking the health of the system. And for the purpose of the ride, since this is a research prototype vehicle, uh, we're gonna can you can direct all the questions and comments to me, and I'll. And your name? My name is Nantita. And your job? What's your title? I'm a UX designer. Okay. With um, Delphi. Okay. UX is user experience. User experience. Thank okay. you, Jeff. That's my question. <laughs> you didn't know that. So, yeah, yeah. So the we're... point I think is that uh, Jeff and Nandita will be doing all the talking. And okay. We're observing you. Just Tony and I are going to be really sober. I don't. I don't know if this helps on on user experience, but it's if you think about the the confluence of technology and the automotive space. You know, you, the technology will have an implication in many different parts of the car. It'll have an impl implication for the powertrain, for better fuel economy and, and lower emissions. It'll have an implication for the architecture underneath the skin of the car, the mile and a half, two miles of wiring, and all the data, the high-speed data that flows around, uh -huh. connecting everything. But it also has a, a big impact on the user experience, or in the cockpit, what we, what we used to call the cockpit. So the displays, how information is displayed, how you interact, how menus are designed, how natural language voice works, being able to track where your eyes are looking, 
your head's looking to know if you're in the game or not in the game. So a lot of the a lot of the car companies now are paying a lot of attention as much in the user experience as they used to spend on styling and on horsepower of the vehicle. Right. So for the millennial group, uh, the millennial age generation, as they age in and become more affluent, become being able to buy bigger and and uh, and more expensive vehicles with more content, the user experience is actually more important than horsepower and styling in terms of a buying factor. So they want to be able to extend their digital lifestyle into the cockpit, but they also, and they're willing to pay for that and, and pay for that opportunity to use it seamlessly and intuitively, but they're also willing to pay for the technology to make sure that they can use it safely. And that's where we, that's where we spend our R&D dollars. Safe, green, and connected, and you'll see a lot of that come together in the drive today. Okay, I'm ready to go. Awesome. So before we start, a few more things. Uh, research prototype vehicle, so we are predicting trying to predict the requirements of our customer, which is the automakers, as well as the need, like Jeff was pointing out, the needs of that future autonomous vehicle driver owner. You know, what is his interactions like? What are our interactions like as passengers in this car? So what we've done today is we've, we're showing you a future scenario. So imagine you're a autonomous vehicle owner um, and you're going for a, uh, you have a meeting coming up and you're, Ooh, okay. and you're going to ride there because it's not walking distance um, and the Apple watch here is part of that multi-device ecosystem uh, where you as a so you just got a buzz on your wrist which shows that you are the autonomous vehicle is trying to communicate with you to let you know that you have a meeting coming up would you like to drive to that should I press the button here yeah. why don't you press the button okay um, I don't think sorry. we have it I think, yeah, so I'll go ahead and click I'll drive and letting the car know that you'll be taking the autonomous vehicle to your destination today. Okay, what does the car say back? So the car is giving you destination information okay. and also the distance that it will um, take to get to there. Okay, you want to say yes to that because I'm holding the camera? Oh yeah, this is good. This is your default screen. So you're okay. good. So this is an example of, you've heard Internet of Things and how we feel that autonomous vehicles and all these devices are also a big part of that ecosystem. Hence, you saw outside, uh, we have vehicle to everything, uh, which is also a key concept where the vehicle communicates to these devices, it communicates to vehicles outside, to pedestrians, to intersections, to you know all these devices. It's an, all a big ecosystem, which we feel is a very key part of the ecosystem of the future. So this is, do you ha are sending data back into the cloud constantly? So this is all communicated internally with the car's okay. system. Okay. And the calendar notification can be through your Gmail, for example, or you can c integrate with those uh, meeting notifications. Okay, so we're, now what do we do? We want to go. Yeah, so we want to go. So let's get started. So she's got an app on her iPhone. Yeah, this is just a presenter's... Okay, there's oh, Kathy sorry. Winter. We know Ka Is that Kathy Winter? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea here is that we want there's to... There's Jeff! Hey, Jeff. Yes. How about that? Jeff. <laughs> Who's Ryan? He's Another one of our colleagues. So oh, the okay. idea here is that we can personalize the experience. Um, safety check starting. And this is a safety check video. Environment sensors ready just like your fancy gauge indicator it's letting you mm. know of the key sensors that are required for autonomous driving v2x communication the health of their uh, those sensors mm -hmm. um, we want you as a passenger to feel comfortable that the car is mm -hmm. ready for autonomous driving and hence okay. so that's the map yeah that's the map for the loop 